everyone we are out here at the easter jeep safari 2024 vendor expo now there is way too much for us to stop at every single booth and show you what's going on here but we have got a bunch of highlights from different vendors here cool things that we wanted to share with you products that we run products that we like products that i want to get so stick around we have a lot of stuff to show you today so Let's go hit the expo. Okay, we're over here at Easy Plate. And as you know, I have been using the Easy Plate recoil system for years. Yep. You know, since you guys started, I think. Yeah. It's been improved yeah. since, uh, since mine. Right? Significantly. And if you watch my video on the Hyperflex system, I had some issues with it, but all those seem to have been addressed. So tell us what's good about it, what's improved, yeah. and uh, then we'll go into the Hyperflex system. Well, with the recoil hose, we've actually incorporated a polyurethane hose that recoils back yeah. on itself. So it makes it a lot simpler if your goal is to be quick. That's and, nice. Yeah, to just get rid of it back into the bag. But better than that, these have the same air chucks? These do. We have all oh. our proprietary air chucks now. So this is our rapid locking air chuck. Quick push on and then hold the sleeve back and pull it off. Yeah. These things, these things work really, really well. They, no leaking, just pop on, pop off. You got it. So nice. They also all come with our dust caps now. That's <laughs> for someone like me who drops stuff in mud all the time. Right. Game changer. <laughs> yep. Now, another feature, though, is if you didn't have the dust caps before or lose one or something, this gets in mud or dirt, push down and twist. Once you hear it rattle oh. around like that, you're good to go again. Nice. You don't even have to take them apart to clean them out. That's awesome. Right. And let's talk about the new manifold. These manifolds are all aluminum now, so they dissipate heat much faster. They also come with a slide Nothing's valve. Nothing's worse than grabbing one and burning your hand. Right? And our incorporated slide valve here makes it so much easier to be able to open and close the airflow. Good. And these last way longer than our old ones that were the turn dial version. Yeah. Now, these styles here also incorporate quick couplers on the side so you can quickly disconnect, uh, connect and disconnect your hose kit. So it's so much easier to set it up and then to take it back down when you're done. Super nice. Yep. Now, these air chucks, they, they're, um, I don't know the term for it, but they're, they're normally closed, right? Correct. So you, before you plug it in, you can have air going and you're not leaking air all over the place as yeah. you're hooking everything up. So you're absolutely right. So what we say is that when you go to put it on the vehicle, go ahead and hook it up to the manifold first. That way you're not going to leak air out the sides. Connect as long as this is closed. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. And it says close and open here to make that easy on you. So people close, like me, yeah, <laughs> we get that question a lot. That's okay. So then when it's all hooked up, you know, it's on the closed system, open to deflate, close it back up, disconnect from any of the tires. And when all four are disconnected, then you can disconnect from the sides here. You're not going to be leaking air out of those tires at all. And then always, I like to give this tip to everybody is be sure to open this up when you're done because as long as that pressure is gone, this will turn off on its own or you can press the on button to turn it off. But if, if you leave pressure, pressure here, you kill your batteries. <laughs> right. Now, in my video on this, I talked about my original recoil system and how it didn't really balance the tires well. But with the new air chucks and manifold, that should be a thing of the past. Exactly. We were talking about this last night. For a short period of time, we were using these clip-on valve stem chucks, and they were terrible. And unfortunately, we had to go through a process there where that was what we were using while we were working on coming out with these. Now that we have these air chucks, nobody should be using those old ones. We went through a period of time where we upgraded every customer that we knew of that had those. Except me. <laughs> including him. <laughs> But I didn't ask. I didn't ask either. So well, now it's not even a problem anymore. But with since I started using the Hyperflex, oh, those are awesome. And now that I know that the recoil system has all the same uh, components to it, either one is now a good deal. You got it. So you're, uh, you're right. going to save a little money with the recoil. The Hyperflex cost. It was only like a twenty or. $30, $30 difference. Dollar difference. Right. $30 right. difference. And really the biggest difference is just that this costs us more to manufacture. But I always say they do the exact same job. The only other difference is if you're a person that uses CO2, you're going to want this one because this will go up to 300 PSI. Ah. Whereas this one, the recoil, will go up to 150. Got it. Other than that, they do the same job. So CO2, you want the Hyperflex system. You nailed it. All right. We got some interesting things to go talk about with some compressors. So we're going to go to the other side of the booth and check those out. All right. Okay, so over here, we've got a plethora of compressors. <laughs> you got it, almost too many to fit on a table. Now, the Moab was your original one, right? Correct. Yep. And 
now I'm going to ask a tough question here. And I'm, I'm going to get a good answer, I'm sure. If you look at this compressor, it's identical, seemingly, to a lot of other ones that are out on the market. Sure. To my original Napa one that I got, but it's not. It's right. Not. You're right. Tell us why this is different. A couple of the biggest factors, especially when you consider that Napa Maxi track, right? First and foremost, those ones didn't come with air filters originally. I don't know if they changed things since, but we have- Well, they don't even sell them anymore. Are. That's true. <laughs> so that's nice. We have dual air filters. We also have a larger board out opening, so more airflow can go in. We have a couple different things, including our electrical lines are twice as long. They're at eight feet long, so it's much easier to reach all the way up when your compressor's on the ground. Mm -hmm. Additionally, our lead hose is six feet long, twice as long nice. as those ones. Nice. This can also reach to your hose kit with, with a tire. regular air chuck on it. Yes. <laughs> so a huge difference there. We switched to the USA standard fittings. Anybody else that's using those Nitto fittings has a hard time adapting to it, but we do sell adapters for that too. Cut. Yep. <laughs> um, our new Moabs here also have a deflator or a pressure relief valve here at the edge. Nice. So when you're done, there's going to be pressure that's left in this hose line, right. but you can still press this button to bleed out the rest of that pressure. Now, does this have any type of internal shutoff if there's overpressure? It does, yes. Oh. At 120 PSI, it has a pressure cutoff switch. We also- So some of us modded our good. Napa's for that and big, nah, I don't want to go into it, it's a mess. <laughs> it is. But it's all built in. You're correct, yep, it's built in. And then additionally, we now have a three year warranty on all of our products. Napa, zero warranty. <laughs> yes, shocking. Right? Yeah, amazing so, from Napa. So but you do get what you pay for when you're comparing passes. Absolutely. And now the auto air. Yeah. Elsie was telling me about this. I, I was hesitant because I'm like, you know, I, I'm airing up. I was getting those inconsistencies before. Is this thing going to shut off at the right point? Right. Now that I've got the Hyperflex and I am getting very super consistent, why would I want to go with this? Ultra convenience, that's <laughs> what I say. It's not necessary. You're absolutely right. This pump does the exact same job. It's just this one does it a little better where you can walk away, forget about it, and once you hear it shut off and it doesn't turn back on again, you're good to go. But yeah, it's really cool because it'll stop and check the pressure, run an algorithm, and then keep going. They'll do that generally every 30 seconds or so. And so then when it shuts off after a couple minutes, you know, hey, it's done, but I didn't have to keep going and checking it. You know, and it's, it's funny, when I, I talk about a four-way tire system, there's always gonna be comments of, why can't you just do one at a time? Well, one, you have to babysit each tire. You have to walk around, do it. I'm trying to pack up. I'm getting my camera gear put away. We're closing the Jeep up. We're, we're getting everything situated. I just want it to go. Yeah. We set it up one time and with the auto air, I set the PSI and I'm totally free to go do anything. I don't even have to babysit the compressor anymore. Right. Sitting there watching my TPMS, you know, <laughs> or whatever. That's awesome. What are the prices on these things? So our prices on the Moab start at two thirty nine, and the Moab Auto Air is ninety dollars more, three twenty. That's not bad. It's not right. Bad. And what do we have in this case? Yeah. So we we have a full line of five compressors here. Yeah, singles and duals. You got it. And this oh, this is an Auto Air and the single. Correct. So oh, wow. probably the same idea as our Moab and Moab Auto Air, but at a more affordable price point, and for those that have tires at thirty five or lower, uh, smaller, if you will. So anything up to 35 inch tires, these are great for it. But yes, we have a Mesa and Mesa Auto Air. So this has that same Auto Air technology. And then we have the case compressor. And I like to say the case is just like the Moab. It's built into this hard plastic durable case. That is it sweet. It comes with a, uh, a long steel braided hose line, your normal uh, single tire hose line that all of our compressors come with, and a single tire trigger gauge as well. So a lot of folks that have trailers or they're moving this around between multiple vehicles love the portability of this compressor. So this is the regular Moab in a case. You got it. Okay, so it's the dual compressor, the whole bit. Yep. Very nice. That That's super handy if you're trying to stack stuff, pack stuff in really nice. This looks like a great option. Yep. So. I'm looking forward to trying out the auto air. I think that's going to really help us. You'll love the, it. The Hyperflex is great. And I gave them an interesting product idea for my trailer last night. So we'll see if that becomes a product. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. Thank you. Pleasure. Your time. Take care. Good to see you. All right, we're over here with RCV. And if you don't know, I run RCV axles on the front of our JL. Why did I do that? 
So the coolest thing about RCVs is really it's the last axle shaft you ever have to buy. Uh, we say that because not only is it a lifetime warranty, it's made of US Chrome Ollie 4340 minimum. You know, we got 300M upgrades, but it's really the benefit of the CV, right? So the U-joint, U-joint when you steer it, you've got oscillation, you've got binding. Uh, when a U-joint steers, it's got leverage on it now that wants to break those ears off. With the CV, it doesn't care what angle you're at. It's gonna be just as strong turned as it is straight. You can hammer on it, nothing matters. Uh, it's easier maintenance, just a couple of pumps of grease. So really, it's the last axle you ever need. Okay, let's let's talk maintenance on it. Okay. Um, now, when I got mine, I was told like five pumps of grease every oil change. Yep. Is that about right? Yep, I would say every other oil change. Every other oil yep. change. You don't even need that much. Really... It does say on the, the website, you can't over grease them. You can't over grease it. The grease is gonna come out that you don't need. <laughs> now that does make a mess, a mess. right? <laughs> so really you'll just kind of do, it's an art, not a science. You pump it up, you get it greasy, it's gonna sling out, you wipe it up, and then from there, you just maintenance it, right? So once it stops slinging, that's your maintenance point. Okay, now, there, I'm having a problem with mine right now when I make a hard left turn, uh, I get a, a bad clicking sound. Okay. And so the guys over at the Edge 4x4, they said it's, it's they got like 45,000 miles on them, it's time for a rebuild kit. Okay. So is that pretty common? So yeah, so what you're hearing is slack in the windows, uh, basically, it's not an imminent sign of failure by any means. It's not like an OEM CV, because an OEM CV only makes noise when it's damaged. Ours is going to have a little bit of extra room. The material is a little softer for strength, right? So, like, if you wanted it to last forever, like an OEM, it has to be hard. And then if it's going to be hard, it's going to be brittle. So, for strength, <laughs> you've got this little bit of slack in there, you know? And it's not necessarily normal, but it's not necessarily a bad thing either. So, really, a rebuild kit is cheap, easy. It's easier than a U-joint. And... Uh, a uh, rebuild kit is cheap and easy, easier than a U-joint, really. It's just a messy job, but, <laughs> All you know, degrees. yeah, just get on your workbench, pop a new internal rebuild kit in. I think they're, for that application, about 150 bucks. And, yeah, they're, they're not expensive. Uh, yeah, you can even keep one in your toolbox if you wanted to, a little peace of mind. <laughs> I'm not sure it's something I want to do on a trail. Ah, uh, you know. But it, you're saying I, I shouldn't need to do it on a trail. Because if when it starts making the sound, it's not... It's not a sign of imminent failure by any means. Okay. Yeah, I wouldn't worry about it. It's more of an annoyance than anything. Okay, but that 40, 45,000, yeah. is that kind of a... It varies depending on how you use yeah, it, right? Hard. Some of these guys are rowdy and they, it, it'll be a little bit faster. Some of them will last the life of the vehicle. So, you know, proper maintenance is really so much, but also it's how it's driven. <laughs> okay, so it's not anything out of the ordinary, and which is what Chris over at the Edge said. Yeah, Because absolutely. the way you treat it that, uh, you know, it's to be expected about that. And it's not it's not a bad, you know, maintenance item to do. So no. not a big deal. No, but it's just a status symbol. They'll hear you coming, they're like, ah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, he's making a left. <laughs> Great, awesome. Anything else that uh, we, we should know? Man, right now we're just here at Sporting EJS. We love this event, we love Moab, we wanna be here. Um, you know, the history of this ride is just so much for us. We've been here for 15 years. I don't even know how long we've been doing this. So. <laughs> Just happy to be here to support. We always do a show special for everybody here in town. And uh, this year we're doing a show special on our website for the first time ever. So check us out, oh, rcbperformance.com. Awesome. Definitely check that out. I'm a huge fan of them. They, it's so much better than, well, it was a forced upgrade because I there you go. broke yeah. a U-joint, right? So I'm like, well, if I'm going to go through the expense of having that fixed, might as well upgrade. There you go. And they have been absolutely fantastic. Easy maintenance. Squirt, squirt, squirt. Good to go. But you're saying about five every other oil change. Five, ten pumps every other oil change. All right. Awesome. Thanks for the advice. Thanks for talking. Absolutely. Thank Thanks you. so much. You know, this is Easter Jeep Safari, and I'm going through the vendor list, and I see your company. I'm like, well, what the hell do they do? And I look <laughs> it up. I'm like, this. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. It's, it's a, like a big quilt, right? <laughs> yep. And, but for overlanding and camping, which we also do, mm -hmm. we're always looking for something that's better. Yeah. I've got a blanket in my camper tonight. It was cold last night. I'm like, what's a better solution? So tell me about this thing. Dude, so this is really exciting stuff because this is the warmest and comfiest camp blanket you can buy. And mm -hmm. you would be surprised how light this thing is. I mean, it doesn't feel like this would keep you warm in a light breeze. Right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's so light. Yeah. It's uh, built like a high-end 15-degree sleeping bag because I used to design sleeping bags for Marmot, Nemo, and then Patagonia until just this last October. And so Aeronaut was created because 
Nobody likes to sleep like a mummy. They're all zipped up. There's a reason we don't use sleeping bags at home. Right. And so my wife and I created this, where it's basically taking that technology, but putting it into the comfiest blanket ever. And so you can use it at home, on the trail. A lot of our customers backpack with it too, which is really cool. Well, it's so light. Yeah. Uh, this is a, a queen size? Yep. What does this weigh? Yeah, so that's two and a half pounds. It's, it's yeah. nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing. Yeah. And the light weight of this, how does this possibly mm -hmm keep you warm. Yeah, it's a nice premium high fill power down. And so combining that with like a unique construction here to make it so it's really lofty, that insulates you and keeps you nice and warm. And so, Man. Yeah. It, I'm, now that I see it, I mean, I'm super impressed that something this light can actually keep you warm. Yeah, yeah, it's, a, it's really fun. So what are these things going for? So normally 500 bucks. Wow, okay, yeah, little pricey. Size. Yeah. But, so is yeah. a, a good sleeping bag. Yeah, yeah, I mean, exactly. It's an investment. I mean, and to take care of it nicely, it'll last you 20, 30 years. So how do you so, take care of it? Well, you just, you can store it in its storage bag. So it comes in the, the large. Yeah. Which, what size is this one? So this is the queen size. That is the queen. So that's this guy yeah. right here. See, this is a stuff sack, but like, um, we have a storage bag also. That's a nice cotton, really big one. Um, yeah, you just keep it out there. Can you? You can wash it and dry it. Oh, just a nice. machine wash? Yeah, machine wash, just a gentle cycle, and then like machine dry with a few tennis balls and it'll last you forever. Wow, you know? very yeah. nice. And yeah. Sorry. Camera. Uh, where can they find you? So we're online at aeronautoutdoor.com or on Instagram, aeronautoutdoor. Excellent. So, yeah. We'll have links in the stuff. description. Yep. Miss it. This Great. thing is incredible. So uh, do you, this is the queen. Do you have other sizes? Yep. Yeah, there's a twin size here too. Okay. Yeah. The twin. And the twin size packs down even smaller. Dang. So it's, yeah, really nice. Vacuum pack yeah. that sucker. Yeah. I mean, and they're like 90 inches or seven and a half feet long. So good for tall folks, you know, and then they're six and a half feet wide for the queen or four and a half foot wide for the twin. Now, so. you get too hot in this if it's warmer or does yep. it breathe pretty that's good? kind of the beautiful thing is that it's nice and breathable because of the down but also you can kick your leg out or just like you do at home you know have as much of it curled up or as open as you want to do so excellent yeah looking for top quality what do you call it a, um yeah a quilt a quilt mm -hmm. it's a top yeah. quality quilt yeah exactly. check them out aeronaut thanks for your time really Thank appreciate you. it really good to meet you we are over here with yankum ropes yep Let's talk recovery gear. Cool, let's do so it. So your main thing, start off with the ropes, right? The yep. kinetic ropes? Yep. What is a kinetic rope for the people who don't know? A kinetic rope, basically the ropes store energy, all right? And it's all about the construction of the rope. So we make everything in Idaho. Uh, we twist, do everything, double braid nylon with the machines. Um, and it's basically the way that the rope's constructed, there's an inner core and an outer core. And what happens is when you put, um, when you put, it stores energy basically. So when you hit that rope, all that energy is gonna spread out. They stretch about 30%. So you're not gonna get that like jerk reaction. Now that's if you're sizing your rope correctly to your- We're gonna get to that. <laughs> to to the, the recovery rig, but it's all about that kinetic energy and that smooth transition. Now, if you've watched some of our latest videos, like uh, the Balanced Rock one, you saw us use Yankum ropes on all those recoveries because it's such a smooth pull yep. versus the guys who we were trying to help started with toe straps. Correct. They were just hurting by the end of the day. Yeah. We show up, it, we pull out the rope. And a toe strap, I mean, typically it depends on what you want. A lot of them are, are nylon. Uh, some of them are different different kinds of materials, but you'll get a little teeny bit of a stretch, but there's not much give in those <laughs> things. So let's talk sizing. Uh, yeah. A lot of people, they, they go shopping for it. They're like, well, one inch has got to be better than a half inch, right? Correct. That's, that, that's not necessary. That is kind of how a lot of people look at it. They always come and say, I want the biggest, strongest rope you have, which totally defeats the purpose of the kinetic energy. So you want to make sure that you size your rope according to the rig that is actually doing the recovery. Doing the recovery. That is doing the recovery. So we have customers sending us tons of videos about a side-by-side -side pulling out a, a one-ton truck. It's possible to do that. You gotta just make sure that you size your rope correctly. Cause if not, like, so let's say for example, you take a one inch, cause we get that a lot. They're like, hey, let's, we want a one inch. We want a beefy rope. If you were to put a one inch and connect that to a Jeep, when you hit that, 
it might stretch a little bit, but you're gonna get more of that chain reaction just because the rope's too much for the rig, it can't stretch. Mm -hmm. So so what would it, be an appropriate size for your typical five, 6,000 pound rig? You're gonna wanna go with a, with a seven eighths. Seven eighths, okay. Yeah, that ranges from about high fours to uh, low sevens as far as poundage. Okay, good information. So you definitely, that, that covers, in fact, some of your, some of your uh, like 2,500 trucks, like gas trucks, you could even do seven eighths on some of those if they're not loaded with any type of gear. Now, I'm sure recently you saw that video of the guy who they, they hooked up a kinetic rope and did a lot of damage and he got all messed up. You've Correct. seen that, right? Correct. So one of the things that I saw in that video was that the speed of that pull. Yes. It's brutal. Yes. So talk to, talk to us about yeah. what is so, the appropriate yeah. way to do that. So here's what we recommend. Um, we never recommend going bumper to bumper, <laughs> backing up and, 30 giving, feet and, and, and giving, it the, giving it that full, you know, 30 stretch. We recommend five miles an hour below. Okay. It doesn't take as much as you actually think that it does. So we say hit it at five miles an hour, do that three to five times. If you're not getting any pr any progress in your recovery, you need to stop and evaluate what's going on instead of just saying, hey, let's back up and, and give it heck, right? You can do that. We don't recommend that you do that. Because the key thing here is you're, we're using energy that's being stored in the rope. Correct. So it's not about getting speed, it's about getting that tension yes. and having that help do the recovery. It's, it's like that rubber band effect, but it's a smooth transition. Right, so we see that a lot, yep. people just overdoing it and that, that recent video is a great example. Yeah, and, and one thing that, that we always make sure that when we're talking recovery, you know, we've, we've tried really hard to eliminate metal in our, in our winching process. I don't know if you've seen some of our other mm -hmm. products, but obviously you need metal for certain things, but we've, we've tried to eliminate the hook so that you don't have any of that in your winch line. Um, but the bottom line is recovery is dangerous. Yes. So you can have the safe, safest, best products on the market, but there's still a danger factor to every recovery that you do. So as long as we can supply the, the best products and the safest products, that's obviously the best start. Yeah, now if you've seen some of our stuff, we have eliminated almost all of the metal. Uh, yeah. We're running the Freedom Winch Line 3.0. Yep, yep. You know, awesome. Very similar. Yep. Uh, Let's talk soft shackles, yeah. Because that was another thing that was in that video. Yep. What What do you recommend in sizing, or, or does it matter when you're it talking? Do, it, it, it does. Um, it, it's not as crucial as far as the rope because obviously soft shackles aren't going to give you that stretch. Why don't you grab one? Let's yeah. talk so, about. So um, we can talk oh. about. Let's get um, this guy. So yeah. So. Um, I took the one off that was looped in. There you go. Okay, so this is gonna be our 5 16 So this is good um, for like your small side, your, your side-by-sides up to even like your small SUVs. Okay. Um, typically for Jeeps, we recommend uh, a 7 16 uh, because most Jeeps are loaded with some gear. So they're gonna be a little bit heavier. Um, but all these soft shackles are, are made in Idaho. Um, and we show on our tags, um, like the MBS of those, and then uh, the size. We also do a double loop in these, which is going to be something similar to this guy right here. There's just a lot more things that you can do with it. You have a little bit more length. You can also double this up for extra strength if you need it. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so that's a good feature. Uh, but soft shackles, a lot of people know about them, but a lot of people are new to them. So they're just awesome just because you don't have that weight. You eliminate that. They're easy to tuck away in a bag. I mean, they're pretty small. So. I think this is a kind of an education piece because, you know, people buy a brand new Jeep. They buy a CB. They buy hard shackles. They buy all yeah, these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, no, you should be on GMRS these days. Soft shackles are the way to go. Correct. You know, they are. And what's cool, too, about them, like, you know, we do a lot of farm stuff. So we sell to a lot of farmers and obviously they're gonna buy the bigger, the bigger ropes and stuff. But you know, you're in the mud, you're in the, you're in the water, you're in a, a bunch of bad environment, right? So the soft shackles obviously aren't gonna disappear in a bunch of guck and water and stuff like that. So that's another cool feature of so that. Well. Let's talk about the myth of soft shackles being the weak link in a system. No, that, that's actually, that's actually false. In fact, 
uh, a lot of these soft shackles, if you compare it to like your D-rings or your hard shackles, they're gonna be equivalent sometimes, if not even stronger than some of those. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> awesome to see the innovation of products and, and what people are inventing. And uh, soft shackles, being... I believe, actually started in uh, the marina. In yes, the marina, yes. Right? Along with the, along with the, a lot of these kinetic ropes, a lot of it was started in the marine industry. And now that we're we're getting this crossover into the off road, yep. a lot of advantages there. There's a ton of advantages, ease of use, safety. I mean, all the above. There's really no way you can go wrong on these. Okay, now so. let's talk about um, snatch blocks. Yes. Okay, you have a unique product. We do in that area. We do. You have one. Yes, we do. Right here. Now you may have seen these sure. online, yep. other companies. This one is a little bit different. It is a little bit different. Wow. So what we've done is we basically eliminated basically half your gear. So you can do up to a five to one with this. The main thing about this offset is that it doesn't spin. Now, a lot of people have said, oh, what about the heat? The what friction. about the buildup, the friction? We've done countless testing with this. We've done heat guns, we've done Break tests, we've done, I mean, you name it, we've done third party testing, we've done our own internal testing. We've seen about a two to four percent increase in friction on 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 these lines. Mm. And as far as damage, we've yet to see any. We haven't got complaints, we haven't got returns on any of these. And so basically, we're kind of reinvented the way that the snatch block works because you can actually, one cool thing is is when you're running your winch line, a lot of times when it gets a little bit of slack into it what happens to your, yep, it, fall. it, it falls off, right? So one of the things is we can actually wrap that uh, soft shackle through that hole and still do the same thing without losing your... Now, your, I'd your say if line. you want to see these in action and really put yes. to the test, Casey Liddell. Casey Liddell has some really good videos. Um, we also have uh, his videos, because he does such a great job, posted on our oh, website as well. Website. Okay. Um, and then you can actually go in and look at the diagrams too. We have them on the actual product, but you can go on our website and it'll actually show the different, you know, like we have a three so, to one. I was going to say, does this come in different sizes? Yes. This all comes, it's all this size, but it'll show you the different configurations on oh, your okay. five to ones, four to ones, three to ones, nice. and so forth. So awesome product, but. Fantastic. It's new, and so I think a lot of people, it's been hard for them to wrap their mind around Well, it. I think just the whole ring Correct. concept, you know, it, has been interesting. Yes. And there's been different takes with different types of retainer yeah. things on them. But yeah. when I saw the offset, I was like, hmm, that, it, that's interesting. Yeah. And then to watch Casey run it through its paces and go, well, here's why. And the size of this, this is way bigger than the one that I have in my Jeep. It, it, it is. And so, so to get our, our, our version 1.0 was actually, uh, this this was narrow, more narrow right here, and this hole was a little bit smaller. And so we went back and, and re-engineered and test and did a bunch of stuff, made this a little bit bigger. It's it's actually quite a bit thicker if you compare the 1.0 to the 2.0. How heavy is this thing? It's not. No, it's not, not bad. It's not too it's not bad. bad. For, not too bad. For the size of this, this, this thing's pretty, yeah, pretty yeah. lightweight. So, Compared to a standard correct, snatch block, correct. it weighs a ton. Yep, all made out of 6060 uh, aircraft aluminum metal. So great product, we love it. We, in fact, these are, we've been getting, I mean, we've been selling the heck out of these things. I bet, I bet. It's like, we'll go to shows, we can't keep these things in well, stock. I think it, like a lot of these products, it's once people understand yeah. what they're yep. for and how they're used, yeah. they're like, well, I gotta have that. Yes. You know? And, and I would say definitely go check out his, Casey's video, because I think he does, I think there's a 20 minute video. I think there's several videos that he does, but the one's about 20 minutes and he breaks it down from A to Z, how these things work. Yeah, so. absolutely. So if you wanna check out Yankum products in the description below, there's a link. We're actually an affiliate partner. So if you buy from them, you know, you get a little kickback here. It doesn't cost you any extra. Absolutely. But I appreciate it. We love the Yankum Ropes products. Thank I you. I gotta get me one of these. Don't have yes. one yet, but we're gonna get hooked up. Thanks so much. Thanks a lot, appreciate, appreciate you. your time. Thanks for coming by, thank you. When I was going through the vendor list for uh, the show here, I saw your company, didn't know anything about you, went to the website, I'm like, Oh my God, this is ideal. You guys make custom toolkits for specific vehicles. Exactly. I, I nailed it. You nailed it. nailed it. Yeah. Right on. I have a big tool roll and I need one socket and I have to dig through 10 that are totally irrelevant for How my vehicle. How much your tool roll, roll, roll weigh? A lot. It's a lot. Because yeah. <laughs> it, 
you know, I'm like, well, I'll just throw everything in it. I'll just buy a big mechanics kit and throw everything in there. That's not a good way of doing it. Tell me what you guys have done that solves that problem. Well, we used to carry, I carried a 24 inch Craftsman bag that weighed 65 pounds. <laughs> And you're right, you don't need an entire socket set. You need the sockets that fit your rig. So that's what we did. We, we engineered a tool roll that works for a vehicle specific kit. And the sockets that you need that are small go in this end. The sockets you need that are big go in this end. Wrenches, screwdrivers, hammer, everything else goes in the middle. The roll rolls in on itself. It is dead silent on the trail. Dave's going to show you. So this is a JK one here. So this is a JK one. This is, that's like I was a take fourth of the size of my tool roll. Exactly. <laughs> and probably lead. a fourth of the weight too. So oh, yeah. if Jeez. you feel a JK, it literally goes underneath the back cover in that, that, like, that little well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it fits in there. It's dead silent because all the tools have rolled in on themselves. And you tighten the straps down. Weighs 14 pounds, 15 pounds, depends on what rig you have. And what vehicles do you have them for? Most Jeeps, back to, so we don't do, we do back to the YJ. We don't have a YJ kit, but we're, we're, we're going to get one, just because there's a few that have yeah. asked for it. Toyota, 4Runner, Tacoma, Land Cruiser, Lexus, GX and LX. Nissan's coming. Back to the 80 series, <laughs> side-by-sides. Wow. All the popular ones. The new Broncos. The new Bronco, the Raptor. <laughs> uh, so a lot. Yeah, we're gonna get the Colorado and yeah. yeah. Excellent. So I, I have a JL, what would I need? A so, J is that a JL kit? That's a JL kit right there. This is the Bronco. They're all labeled, but yeah, you would just well, need- This is a JK. This is a JK kit. Yeah. I'll grab you a JL kit. Let's grab a JL kit. <laughs> okay. There we go. Here's our JL kit. Oh, right geez. Please stay. So it's everything you need to do brakes, suspension, steering, and drivetrain. Wow. You have your brake line wrench right here, a drive line wrench. Here's all the sockets that you need. We have adapters to go to the breaker bar, which is right there. Your uh, screwdrivers. Here's your 36 millimeter for your axle hub nut. Yeah. Oh. Big hammer. Because <laughs> eventually, I needed break a U joint. I needed one of those. <laughs> so again, it's everything for brakes, suspension, steering, and drivetrain. Nice, nice. And so, what does something like this cost? Um, two. Two sixty nine. Sixty nine on the website. Right yeah. Now. Wow. I mean, you can go to Home Depot and buy a cheap mechanics kit for 200 bucks right exactly and you're still not going to have everything no you're not going to have what you need that's the problem see exactly. this, this is a special 13 millimeter 12 point that you need for your unit bearing hub <laughs> you know, you're not going to find that in your normal tool kit yeah that's the other thing it's it's exactly what you need so most of the tools are six point you need a 12 point to get the <laughs> so we give you a 12 point um we already talked about your axle hub. Yeah. You know, that's Yeah, beefy. and then we throw in, you know, a needle nose, because you, you're going to have to pull out a cotter pin on your tire. <laughs> your... I mean, and these are, these are nice. Oh, that's like rubber coated. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, so we... we I mean, we the, this does not feel like cheap tools. They feel like really nice tools. No, yeah, we... It, we have a lot of vendors, and we've, we've gone through and hand-selected tools based on would you use it. You know, what I yeah. use it on the trail. So we have two brands, Gear Wrench, which everyone's okay. familiar with, mm -hmm. right? And uh, Gear Wrench is a little more, of course. Yes. Because Gear Wrench stuff's expensive. And then uh, Steelman Pro is the other brand. And they make um, tools for Snap on Macpo, Husky, Cobalt, Craftsman. Nice. Oh, really I love that really offset. Brand. Oh, yeah. 90%. That is sweet. Sweet offset on this. That is. Saves your knuckles. Especially with these big Sasquatch hands, man. <laughs> Very nice. Four wrenches. So, and lifetime warranty. You know, that's important. Oh, yeah. Nice. So, I guess if you are looking for tools and you don't know what to put in a kit, talk to the guys at Red Dog Tools. They've got it under control. RedDogTools.com. Any discount codes or anything? 
for or just here at the show? At the show, um, we have a discount. Yeah. Um, we hit everything. Yeah. <laughs> so we do have discount codes from time to time. We don't want to put it out there and leave it. So well, if I manage to weasel a discount code from them, I'll let you guys know. There you go. There you go. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for do that. I appreciate it. Thank you. We are over here with the Blue Ribbon Coalition. It is. Why don't you explain what you guys are all about? Yeah, Blue Ribbon Coalition is a 5013C uh, nonprofit that is fighting uh, for land advocacy uh, through litigation, through uh, proper trail usage, and through education. So um, teaching people responsible usage on trails, at the same time fighting land closures. As everybody knows, there's 317 miles of trail that was recently closed in Moab. Uh, we're currently fighting those fights along with other ones throughout the United States. Um, and that is our complete goal is uh, to keep access for everybody out there and make sure that trails stay open and enjoyed. Now, this isn't happening just in Utah. It's happening in other states as well. Absolutely. Um, we're fighting the land usage here in uh, Moab where we're at right now. Um, there's other issues like the Dolores National Monument that is being proposed for Western Colorado that is being fought against um, by locals and uh, a lot of the people on the ground. So we're getting involved in that. There's fights in Idaho, California, even New Jersey and Wisconsin for the East Coast people. Um, there, anywhere that uh, land is closed basically or being tried to be closed, we're fighting against it. So um, we're trying to get the word out, making sure everybody knows that we're here. We're on boots on the ground and uh, we're out there for you for everybody out there, so. So I really appreciate everything that you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to help support the Blue Ribbon Coalition, right below this video, there is a fundraiser for Blue Ribbon Coalition. We've already Excellent. raised a couple hundred dollars for Excellent. you. And uh, we challenge everybody to donate something. And again, I did a video on this a little while ago. I challenge all the other YouTubers out there to add to the fundraiser as well. It doesn't take away from anything that you earn and it goes for one of the best causes in the off-roading community. Well, and I'll also put in that any money going to Blue Ribbon Coalition goes directly to the fights. Um, it's it's expensive to fight these fights. I mean, it's expensive through to go through the courts and to set all these things up. So any support is greatly helped and we look forward to working with anybody out there who wants to help and you know keep trails open, so. Absolutely, again, Maybe it's below, maybe it's to the left, wherever it is on your screen that you see the fundraiser button, please donate and help the Blue Ribbon Coalition save our trails. Thank you so much. Thank you. We're over here with Devos. And if you remember last year at Overland Expo Mountain West, I picked up the Light Ranger 1200. It has been kind of a game changer for our lighting at awesome. camp. It is awesome. Tell us about the products i already know about them but sure give us your little spiel you bet so what we have here is a 1200 lumen lantern that goes on a nine foot pole so once you get nine feet up with 1200 lumens angled down you get a 60 foot area of light um, you have control over direction uh, you can dim it by holding the button down for five seconds in any of those modes we built these risers into the top so you can put it upside down and work under your rig at night uh, we have a hook in the top, so you can hang it in your tent or under an awning. So that's the basic thing. You get a 1200 lumen lantern on a nine foot pole, 60 foot area. Then we can talk about accessories. But wait, there's more. <laughs> Hit me, what are you talking One about? One of my favorite accessories are the filters. You got the, the orange one, kind of gives you a nice uh, campfire look. My favorite is the red one, especially in Colorado during the summer when we're around all the bugs. This thing does not attract bugs at all. When we had it out at the maze district, it was not attracting bugs. And the red light doesn't affect your night vision. So you can walk away, go to your bathroom, whatever, and you don't lose that night vision because you had a bright light. But if you need the light, man, this thing is wicked bright. So, and the fact that you can adjust it from four to two to one, watch it, watch it, watch it. And uh, dim it, I mean, you get total control over the light. Right. Anything else new? I mean, I, the motion sensor, I don't think I've seen that before. Yeah, our latest addition is this motion sensor. The cool thing about it is you can set whatever mode you want. So let's say you want uh, just the one lit up. 
You plug in your motion sensor to the USB port. Oh, wow. Wait a second, it'll bling. Now it's connected. So at this point, huh. it's, if any motion senses, it comes back on to that setting. We also have time and sensitivity adjustments on the bottom. I can think of a bunch of use cases right there. Absolutely. I mean, we, we usually leave ours just set up at night when we go to bed, but never fails. You know, I'm getting older. I have to get up in the middle of the night and go pee. So being able to step out, the light comes on, or if animals come around. Animals? You know? Yeah, we spoke to a, a park ranger the other day that said, if you just have a light on all night, the bears don't care. They'll come into your campsite. Yeah. But if they approach your campsite and the light turns on, they, it spooks them. It spooks them. They run out. So very nice. So anti-bear protection. I like that. <laughs> probably other animals as well. But yeah, I, I love that. That's a, that's an awesome feature. What does that go for? Uh, let's see. I can't remember. I also did. <laughs> Show special is fifty-four dollars. Okay, not bad. I like that idea. So, any, oh, the solar panels. Solar panels. You've had those. Yeah. Have, have we talked about those before? I, I think you had those at Mountain West. We did. But I'll demonstrate real quick. So it just simply connects to the top of the lantern. And then you just run your USB port from your uh, solar panel USB <laughs> to your lantern USB. So in a good full day of sun, it'll charge it in about five hours. That's not bad considering the runtime on the light itself is like four hours, right? Right, correct. So all day in the sun, run it full power. Awesome, awesome. So if you're looking for some camp lighting, this is my favorite product. It, it, goes with us everywhere now. And down in the description is an affiliate link. So if you buy one, you know, I get a little coin. I appreciate it. So thanks so much. Really love the product. Yeah, nice Good to seeing you again. again. Yeah. Take care. We are over here at Apex Performance Products. I run some of these on my vehicle. We'll talk about those. Let's start with the valves. What are these and what are they for? So the RPV, this is a rapid precision valve. It's a deflator for your tires, basically. It's a full valve stem replacement. So basically what you have is a valve that has a, a standard Schrader with a standard Schrader core in the end of it. But what is different about this is it has a slide valve on it that has an air gate on the side of the valve. And this will dump air very rapidly. So you can air down a 35 in roughly 15 seconds with these from let's say 30 to about 10 psi so yep. somewhere in that range you know 10 to 15 seconds we put these on uh optimus about a year or so ago i say it is one of my favorite mods we've ever done because it is so fast if katarina's walking around taking the the covers off i can air down in one minute flat it's all, 15 seconds per tire. Yeah, all four tires. All yeah. four tires in one minute. That's going from 35 PSI to 12 on 38 inch tires. It is by far one of the coolest things I've ever done on the Jeep. Yeah. Super fast. Super fast. So they do work with standard TPMS sensors on all American models. And we also have adapters for Japanese like Toyota, other different types of models as well that just basically bolt onto the valve that hold the TPMS sensor. So. Now, for someone who doesn't want to go through the whole hassle of having these mounted in their wheels, which I did, I went to Discount Tire, they did it for like, I don't know, 20 bucks a tire or something, it wasn't too bad. You have another product. Yes, so, where did it go? Um, so we have the RCV, so this, what this is, is it's a screw-on deflator. So basically, you take your cap off your valve, you take the core out of take your core existing out. Okay. valve, and then this screws on in its place. And what it does is it just replaces your Schrader. So you have a regular Schrader core. And then this has the same gate on it that the RPV does, but it's a screw on deflator. So it's not gonna be quite as fast as the regular ones? Correct. This takes, on a 35, this takes about a minute to air down to from 30 to 10. And this takes about 15 seconds. So. But when you compare that to the standard screw-on deflators, even the JT Brooks Pros or things like that, those take minutes and minutes and minutes to air down. Yeah. This is, if you're going to do it in a minute. Really fast. That's, yeah. that's still a huge. We timed it. So we, with these, we'll actually walk around and, and pop all four of them open at the same time and time it. And it takes about a minute 50 to air all four tires down with that process. That's not bad at all. So, yeah. I mean, 
I highly recommend the other ones because it's super fast. Mm -hmm. Now, another mod that we have on the Jeep right now, haven't finished the video on it yet, but it is the power steering boost kit. This is not a hydraulic system. It's not, you know, a complete RAM system. Tell us what it actually is. So the boost kit is ex exactly what it says it is. So you have the factory electronic steering pump in the JL and JT. And what this does is it basically just boosts the pressure in this pump and increases the pressure in the system, allowing you to have easier steering, simply put. Oh, so. that's, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. And now you can optionally keep the gauge on there so you can adjust it in the field if you want to. I, I, mine's behind my wheel well. I can see it through a little uh, grate right there. Pretty cool. But how well does it work? That's the question, right? I love it. In the snow, on the rocks. We were doing a trail a few weeks ago and I realized like 30 minutes later that I still had my lockers on because it was just so easy to turn the steering wheel. I know that's hard to believe when, when you're sitting there yeah. and you're struggling with it. It is a massive improvement. It does increase. So it increases when you're driving in, let's, I mean, off-road, obviously it works. The biggest time that we notice it, honestly, is in a, in a parking lot when you're on, even up to 40 inch tires. When you start to turn really fast to get into a stall or something mm -hmm. and you have your steering slow way down, uh huh, it's going to get. Now you're like. Yeah, it's one <laughs> finger, literally. So it does, it helps immensely when you're running larger tires. Yo, way cheaper than going to a whole RAM system. And it works. I'm totally on board with this thing. But you think about this you're increasing all this pressure. What else are you going to increase? Heat, right? Mm -hmm. How do we deal with the heat? It comes, so the kit comes, you can purchase it with the cooler included. So Which you highly recommend. <laughs> it, it, you have to run this with the cooler. Yeah, you, you so it. whether it's our cooler, we recommend our cooler because it's higher volume than others that are on the market. Or if you already have one. If you That'd be the only reason one. to not Correct. get by it's, that. Yeah, you definitely want to have a cooler with this kit. So. And when you watch our video install of this, this tucks up so nice underneath. You don't even know it's there. Mm -hmm. yeah, you, you have to know what you're looking for to yeah. even see it. So yep. awesome stuff. Another cool new product uh, for um, what all models is JLs, JTs? JL, JT, JK on the auto links. Okay. Are, are you talking auto yeah, links? The auto links. Okay. So the auto links, check this out. If you don't have electronic sway bar disconnect, you got to check this out. So yeah, this is in essence, yeah, sway bar disconnect for the JL, JT, and JK. So basically what you do is just twist and unlock each knob and then that frees up your sway bar. So then your axle can rotate independently of your sway bar. It stays stationary um, and it's really easy. It makes it so that you don't have to park your sway bar or tie up your sway oh, bar. And the, the guys who are, even with some of the quick connects, they're still having to like zip tie it up to the frame or something yeah, to, you have so to they don't flop around. Tie it up so it's For not. all the different options out there, I have not seen something that is this clean. Yeah. And then so, when you're going to, when you're finished off-roading. The biggest thing with this is it's always, a, historically it was always a wrestle to reconnect your sway bar because you have to sit bar. there and pry it back together and this eliminates that. You can be on uneven ground and just lock each knob and then just push one side down until it clicks and you're good. And as soon as you start moving, mm -hmm. that other side's going to click The other side in. will click in, yep. How cool is that? That's How, how much is a, a kit like this? 450. 450. I mean, on the higher end of sway bar disconnects, but the convenience, you never disconnect anything. Everything is always right here. So simple. It's what an amazing product. Thanks for your time. Yeah, really so appreciate thank it. Thank you. One of the places we had to make sure and stop by is the automotive. We run a couple of their products, but I'm going to let the expert here tell you all about them. Yeah, I'm Mike with the automotive. I'm the VP of sales. Uh, we make the Taser JL, the JK Blaster, and uh, some locker solutions for you guys getting your uh, rear locker lights going off. I've got, I've got two of these. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's quick and easy to install and you're back on the road. It's always good to throw in the glove box. Yep. Um, and then we make a couple of camera kits for you guys where if you don't have your off-road camera, you're able to install it with the Taser as long as you have the uh, 8.4. And then we have our uh, HDMI kit for the uh, Overlanders. If they're they're out and about, they can plug in a Fire Stick and hang out and watch some uh, whatever they want <laughs> off the Fire Stick. So of course, the main product here is the JL Mini. Yes, sir. And it has over 70 different features. Yes. Tell us all of them. 
Oh my God, we'll be here till Easter <laughs> if I tell you all of them. <laughs> the, the key ones for me were, uh, it remembers the setting for your auto start stop. Yes. So if you turn it off, it stays off. It doesn't disable yes. it, it no. just remembers the last setting. Yes, sir. You can adjust your tire size, you can adjust your gears, you can put on a little light show, you yeah. can enable all kinds of different things. What, for your typical customer, what are their favorite options? Uh, we hear it really depends on the build that they're going for. Some people have come up to me and said they built their Rubicons without the front camera because the front camera that we sell allows you to go at any speed limit. Um, um, some people come that they bought it just for the auto start and stop because they hate it. Or they come out of the vehicle and it honks three times and they hate it and they bought it for that. Yep. Um, and then you have the extreme guys that are swapping over to Dana 60s and 80s and want to retain their factory locker uh, switch and they buy it for that. Um, but my favorite one is driving in uh, rear wheel drive and putting the rear locker on. You know, I'm from Florida, so no offense to Floridians, but it's a little easier out there than it is out here in Utah so you're able to do most of the trails with the the rear locker on and rear wheel drive and you know you can control your front and rear lockers yes. you can uh, turn your disconnect your sway bar in four high and the 392 guys can disconnect the front and do some uh, burnouts or whip <laughs> it around fun. the sand and uh, I love the turn assist Okay, yes. explain, explain how that works. So it locks up the brakes and it allows the vehicle to make a tighter turning radius similar to that of the Bronco. Um, there's a video out there uh, through KC250 mm -hmm. and he did a comparison um, with a Bronco in the snow and we actually came out on top with a tighter turning radius with our device. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I love that when we're on really tight switchbacks, other people are doing three point turns. I flip that on make a really tight turn they're like how, how did you do that yeah. like turn taser. assist baby you have it you have a taser learn how to use it yes There's all kinds of cool features on it yeah there is and we're very lucky to work with a lot of people in the industry too like we uh work with uh atlas to work on that uh two uh handle transfer case that they make and um we work with amw at america's most wanted who do the hellcat and demon conversions you know if you need that extra dukes of hazard power going up the hill and yeah we're very lucky to work with a ton of companies. Well, th there's a lot of modifications that people do that, that basically require it. If you're going to go to one tons, you don't want the fad light, you yeah. know, the service four wheel drive light coming on yeah. all the time. Or hydro steering, you PSC. All, all kinds of different features like that. There, it really is a fantastic, it, I ordered it before my Jeep even arrived. Okay, thank I, you. I knew I was going to 37 inch tires immediately. So yes. I'm like, well, I don't want to go to the dealer, pay 150 bucks to have them do it. Yeah. When I'm probably going to need it one more time. So of might course. As, it pays for itself real yeah, fast. It truly does. It allows someone to really take their stock vehicle and do whatever they want with it and fully customize it to whatever level they want to take it to, which is pretty awesome. You know, <laughs> with all the electronics in these things, it's, it's not like a uh, Comanche or something of that nature. <laughs> yeah. Now, we're talking about the the JL. You have the JK Blaster has not as many features, right? Not as many. But no. you also stu have stuff for a, a wider range of vehicles. Yes. So we we support the Charger Challenger. That's where we started off on was the uh, Dodge Charger in 06. The owner had an 06 Charger. Tried to do a burnout. Did a one wheel peely. He's an electrical engineer by trade, figure out a way to bypass all those nannies and did a two wheel burnout. And that's how the company was started. So <laughs> we support the Charger, Challenger, Chrysler 300, the uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee Trackhawks, the Durangos, the Ram 1500, <laughs> 2500, 3500. So all, all Chrysler Dodge Ram vehicles we support. Um, and even the Wranglers have our, our known feature for the line lock. So it's a little grandfather in from the Chargers and Challengers to do some uh, 40 inch tire burnouts if you want to do them. So nice. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the cool safety features. Safety theft protection would be theft a better word. So we've got the the hood alarm yes. and the, the pin lock. Yes. Right. Yeah. We just released the pin lock not too long ago. It allows a customer to enter a pin into their steering wheel 
it uh, locks down the vehicle. If the pin isn't entered in, it actually locks the uh, the brakes all around. <laughs> the lights start flashing, and got, hopefully it does protect your vehicle and deter those people from it. So it's a whole new market um, that we're going into. And if you bought the device, that feature is free. So the, the device came out with maybe about 30 features or so, and now we're well over 70, and we offer free updates. So that's yeah. a whole new, some people tell me they haven't updated in two or three years, and I go, well, you're in for a surprise. <laughs> yeah. And some of the stuff is is just there, like the the auto start stop remembering it just it's just there. Yep. Some things like the turn assist, there's winch mode that will bump yes. your RPMs up. I use that when we're airing up our tires or using the winch. Uh, the turn uh, you when you turn the turn signals on, the rear camera can come on, all kinds of amazing stuff. Yes. One of the features I'm gonna be using pretty soon will be the ability to install the 392 steering wheel in my JL. Yes, to add the paddle shifters. Yes, yes. yes. Got to yeah, have that. will that. work. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of mods that you can do that require a taser. Yes, yes sir. So you might as well just get one. Yes. What are we, we talking about price? They're 329 and there is a lighter version that it's cut down on features, and we actually call it the Taser JL Lite. That starts at 219. Um, the cameras are about 189. And uh, yeah, I mean, you can go on our website, www.zautomotive.com. Um, we're always in stock. We pride ourselves it's two day shipping. It, most of the times, all the orders go out before uh, four o'clock Eastern Standard Time, and it's mostly one day shipping next day. So if you're in a pinch, It'll be there next day. Or Are there any second. cool features coming that you can talk about? Uh, we oh. recently came out with support for the 24 JLJT. Um, that just came out last week. So it supports the new Uconnect 5 radio. So a lot of those cool live features that you're mentioning, mm -hmm. like turning on your signal, your backup camera is in there. Um, and then we have a couple of more products I can't talk about coming down the pipeline for the JL. Uh, we've got one launching. Um, in a couple of weeks that I can talk about that allows the customer to integrate the factory locker switch and sway bar disconnect um, and utilize those factory locker switches if they want to do junkyard swaps on a, a Rubicon. Oh, nice. A Rubicon axles, um, or if you're throwing in Dana 60s and 80s in the vehicle, um, it allows you to utilize that factory switch if you don't even have it. So it's great for the sports, the Saharas. Um, and we're launching that hopefully uh, in a couple of weeks. and. Hopefully that helps out a lot of guys that want to have that factory look and not have wires running all over the place. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that should be a pretty cool product when it launches. Now, I want to go back to another product we, we briefly touched on here, and it's this little guy right here. If you own a JL, at some point, <laughs> it will happen. you're going to need this. You're going to get service four-wheel drive errors. You're going to take it to a dealer, and they're going to tell you, you have to replace your axles. Yes. I had that done. It was under warranty, so it was cool, and this product didn't exist at that point. What is causing that problem, and how does this fix it? To my understanding, there's a sensor in the uh, rear that is inside the whole um, pumpkin. And unfortunately, due to the heat, it breaks down over time and that sensor fails. All we do is we take that sensor and move it to the outside so you're able to utilize that functionality. Um, unfortunately, some guys are coming forward to me and telling me now, uh, but 18s or 19s at the fronts are failing. Um, so I have an 18 and my front fail. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why, that's why yeah. I have two of these. <laughs> yes, yes. A lot of people buy it and throw it in a glove box just in case. and. Uh, Right when we launched this product, actually a customer was out here wheeling and without notice their locker failed and I got a phone call crying, can you overnight one of these to my campsite? <laughs> so I drove out to FedEx that night and mailed one out and uh, got them back off the trail and, and they were happy and ready to go. So yeah, because your lockers won't work when that happens yes. and you're throwing error codes. It's it's. You won't even, it doesn't even like going into four wheel yeah, drive. If you're on it's, Hell's Revenge or yeah, something like that, you're day. not coming off. Yeah. <laughs> so my rear failed. I put one in, bought a second one, put it in the glove box. And sure enough, about four months later, I'm underneath going click, click. And it is so simple. It's just in line. You'll never know it's there. Yes. So, yes, sir. and this goes for how much? 189. 189. 
way cheaper than having to replace your axle. Your full, yeah, crate axle. <laughs> All right, so check them out at ziautomotive.com. If you own a JL, you have to have one of these at some point. Yes. So thanks so much for Thank your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thank you for stopping by. Well, an Easter Jeep Safari is not an Easter Jeep Safari unless you stop and see some of the concept vehicles from Jeep. This Willys is pretty slick. The paint job on it, the interior, it's all pretty darn cool. And in the back, the little uh, can there opens up and it's a little bar. So kind of hard to go wrong with this Willys here. It's pretty sweet looking, I gotta say. Now this 392 is loaded with awesome mods. I love these fenders, they are so slick. This is the 392 Lowdown concept. This thing is pretty sweet. It is totally dialed. The list of mods that they did to this is extensive. But if you're looking for an awesome 392 build, uh, this is one to take a look at because it has some pretty nice features on it. And I love the way they did the tailgate on this thing. Really sweet. Uh, this Gladiator uh, is pretty nice, got to say. Um, if you're into the Gladiators, this is a nice build. Nothing too extreme here. It's just a new model that just has a handful of little mods on it here and there. Nothing too outrageous. The dash is pretty clean. And then I noticed this mount up here. I've never seen this before. I don't know who makes that, but I like it a lot better than the one I have. So uh, I think this is a AEV bumper, maybe. And this Wagoneer Vacationer Edition with a winch on the bumper. If you're taking a Wagoneer somewhere where you may need to have a winch, it may not be the best vehicle choice for you. But rooftop tent, fully loaded for some serious road trips. And then this last uh, Gladiator here with these tube doors. This thing's sitting on 42s. Uh, it's got some drop-down steps there. Those look pretty neat on there. I mean, it's okay. I don't, I'm not a fan of the tube doors. And then they have this accessory wall. You can see some of the things that they have available uh, right from Mopar Performance. If you're into that, that's cool. They got a handful of pretty neat little options there. Nothing too extreme. That was our tour of Easter Jeep Safari 2024 Vendor Expo. Hope you got something out of it. Hope you learned a few things. I think we need to go hit a trail. Thanks for watching everybody. Stay safe out there. We'll see you on the trails.